Do you have back issues? It hurts when you snatch. Maybe when you catch a clean, your lower back just feels like it's gonna blow out. Maybe when you back squat, you feel like your spine's gonna shoot out the back of your skin. We've got the best exercises for you to improve your back strength for weightlifting, and we're gonna start right now. So when we want to train and strengthen our lower back, or strengthen our back in general, especially for weightlifting, we've gotta identify what those muscles are. So first, the erector spinae. That's gonna be the major columns right outside of the spine. Okay, the erector spinae is made up of the iliocostalis, the spinalis, the longissimus dorsi, okay? Those are the three major muscles that make up the erector spinae and support that. And they also tend to be a little bit slower twitch. They respond very well to high levels of reps, okay? So sets of 30, 40, 50. They also respond very well by just incorporating some sense of flexion or extension. So another aspect that we have to bring in is that we've gotta make sure that we're actually mobile throughout our hips, throughout our glutes, so we have a good supporting role from those major muscles around our lower back. And then we need to make sure that we're training our obliques. Okay, our internal and external obliques play a huge role in supporting that overall trunk. And then finally, we need to make sure that we're at least hitting the piriformis as well, so we don't have any piriformis syndrome issues that can also lead to a substantial amount of stress on our lower back. So now, we're gonna get into those key exercises that you can use as a weightlifter to improve that back strength. Okay, so this is the legitimate current setup at the Garage Strength Glute Ham, which has bands, plates, just absolutely everything around it, mainly for our shot putters and for our weightlifters. But if we're training weightlifting, right, we wanna look at something that's gonna help improve our unilateral strength. Okay, we wanna have something that can have a very, very rapid rate of action. Okay, weightlifting is very, very high speed. So we need to make sure that our back is strong in those high speeds, and that's gonna help improve our overall performance. So I'm gonna give you one of the coolest exercises. We call these Dane's Fast Back Movements, okay? Dane's Fast Back is how we actually label it inside of our overall programming. And this is gonna be a movement that's gonna lead to improving your oblique strength, your lat strength, your traps, and even your erector spinae from different angles. Okay, so we're gonna be here, and I wanna focus on pushing my heels into the actual plate. So my toes are gonna to try and maintain dorsiflexion. Okay, that's gonna help me extend my hips a little bit more, which is absolutely key when we're thinking about weightlifting. Okay, so we're here, and now what I wanna do is I wanna rotate a little bit here and go boom. Come down, boom. And then we'll go here, boom. Here, boom. And then we can rotate back over here, boom. boom. Okay, and we can just do little series, boom. and cycle through that. Now, when we're looking at Dane's fast back, I recommend doing five, 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 but go one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 five, five, five. And then the next set, start on the opposite side that you finished on, okay? Or start on the opposite side that you started your previous set on. So if I start my set on my left, I wanna start my second set on my right, okay? I would do this as an accessory movement during the comprehension phase, probably during the ascension phase as well, but I would take this out during the summit phase when I'm trying to lead into a peak. So do our back accessories always have to be crazy and wild? Not always, okay, we can simplify shit a little bit more here. And one of the things that we've gotta remember is that if we can look at our back, especially with weightlifting, it's under a lot of stress, okay, there's a lot of volume, and there's also a fair amount of compression when we're thinking about back squats. We need to focus on decompressing the back, okay, to a point, and also leading to some type of flexion, but while also training our abs to fire at the same exact time. And then if we can do higher rep sets, we can strengthen the erectors, and then we can also lead to a little bit more blood flow to specific areas that are a little bit more slow twitch, and that's where this exercise comes into play. This is gonna be the reverse hyper. I hope every weightlifter has a variation of this in their gym, and if you don't, you can do banded reverse hypers to a point over a bench or even over a glute ham. Now, we've done a video on what the best loading is gonna be, okay? Haley Reichert does this about three days a week. She actually was just on here, and she has her body weight loaded on this reverse hyper. So I recommend doing about three sets of 17 to 30 reps, okay? Take about 60 seconds rest. Your erectors respond really well and they can handle that rest period very, very well. And you're gonna get a huge pump in your lower back and it's gonna help you with the overall load that you're gonna be doing in your training. 
Okay, so when I'm doing this, I wanna squeeze through my belly button, okay? And then I wanna arch at the top, flex, arch, flex, okay? And we wanna feel our abs doing some work as well, and also our glutes. We wanna to start to pull from the glutes as we're bringing that up. That's what's gonna help strengthen the full posterior chain. So we're here. Okay. I really, really like to think about pushing my abs into that bench. And then that's the same feeling that we want to have when we're pulling off the floor. If we're pulling off the floor, we're going to push the abs into our belt. It's going to help strengthen our lower back and have a direct transfer to the platform. Okay, so we talked about training the back unilaterally. Okay, so that brings up a little bit of that question mark. What can we do to train the back unilaterally? And I will say it's going to be a little bit more posterior chain, but that plays that supporting role in making sure our back stays healthy. And that's going to be a single leg RDL. Now, if we're weightlifters, I recommend doing this with a barbell and doing this with varying grips, okay? With a clean grip and with a snatch grip. If you don't have access to a bar, but if you're a weightlifter watching this channel, you should have access to a bar. You can use dumbbells, you can use kettlebells. Now, what I wanna see is if I'm using my snatch grip, okay, I can go here and pull through. And I even like to bring that knee through a little bit more. And as I get a little bit more awake, I can start to get a little bit more range of motion. Okay, so this is how we can do it. Now, my right side's a little bit tighter. So I probably should have done my right side first. Oh, but I'm gonna bring up a practical scenario here. If you tend to catch a snatch and rotate away from a specific side. Oh, one more. Okay, so let's say you catch a snatch and you rotate to your right, okay? What you're gonna tend to see is that when you do your right leg, you're gonna start to rotate to that side. So the big goal here is that we wanna focus on doing the side that tends to be a little bit weaker first. The second aspect, make sure that you're focusing on keeping that bar as straight as possible. It's gonna feel funky if you're used to twisting to one side and you can't figure out how to fix that. But this is a great movement that trains the entire posterior chain and trains that lower back and you're gonna to start to feel a little bit better proprioception, okay? When you do that, now you can start to transition that into how you're pulling and how you're catching, okay? Typically that twist will start from the pull and it really appears when you catch, okay? So if we understand that, now we wanna try and get rid of that and flush that twisting motion out of our pull and that in turn will improve our overall catch. So I recommend doing snatch grip RDLs, clean grip RDLs, do it on a single leg, okay? So that will decrease the load a little bit. The volume will be higher because we're gonna be doing reps and sets on each leg. Okay, do four sets of seven on each leg. And I would recommend typically doing this on like day three or day four of a six day work week. Okay, you will get a little bit sore in the hamstrings and the lower back, but make sure you hit this during the comprehension phase and the ascension phase. And I would take out single leg back work when we're in the summit period, trying to really head into that big time peak. Okay, so these next two exercises I'm gonna give you are gonna be the craziest, most wild, glute ham variations that you've probably never done. I wanna train the hamstrings and lower back together. Typically, weightlifters are very successful because they have short legs, okay, for the most part. Yes, Yuri Vardanian and Jake Horse are out of the question because they have very long legs, but most weightlifters are like Piro Stimas with very short legs, so what that means is their hamstrings aren't that strong, okay? So they tend to get lower back issues because they're so anterior dominant. Okay, but we want to focus on strengthening that posterior chain. So doing this means that we need to focus on hamstring strength in a bent knee position to elicit that response that we want to see when they're in a bent knee position pulling off the floor. Okay, that's a really, really important concept. It's important to strengthen the hamstrings in a very, very lengthened position at knee extension, but it's also gonna carry over better if we have a bent knee position. So this is where the first glute ham variation comes into play. This is gonna be a wild one, okay? So we wanna go bent knees, safety bar on my back, and I wanna have a little bit of rounding and an arch, round and an arch. And this is a really, really hard exercise the hardest accessory exercises we wanna put inside of our parabolic periodization model, typically in the beginning, during the exposure phase, during the comprehension phase. If we can build up a lot of strength during those phases, 
then we're gonna see that carry over when we're heading into the peak, which will happen during the ascension and then most importantly during the summit phase. Okay, so I'm gonna get here. I'm gonna have a slight bent knee position. Oh, I'm gonna try to grab this. It's gonna be a little bit easier to have a partner, okay? Oh, so I'm gonna be here, round, arch, round, arch, round, arch. Try and have a flat foot on the plate. Oh, okay. So, holy cow. My hamstrings and my lower back are totally lit up. Now, holy crap, my hamstrings into my lower back. Again, this is gonna be key for developing that strength when we're pulling, okay? If we have our foot flat against the plate, that's gonna mimic that position off the floor. If we have our knees bent, that's gonna mimic that same knee flexion that we wanna see when we're pulling. And that's why this drastically improves that position. What's wild is that that's hard for me, and I've actually had Haley do that with the safety squat bar, which is crazy now that I think about it. But that's gonna take us into the next one. One of the big factors around the erector spinae is that it responds really, really well to long periods of time under tension. Okay, so this is gonna be improving our back strength on the finish. It's also gonna to lead to drastic improvement on the dip and drive of the jerk, okay? A lot of people don't think about how can we strengthen our back during that position. Okay, we can actually do it on the glute ham and even what we just did with the safety bar, that's gonna help. Also, I'll give you some reps and sets on the safety bar. I would just do like five sets of seven to nine, okay? But now let's get into this next one. So I'm gonna try and be locked out here in my knees. So I wanna hold this position. And this is a variation that I've seen some of the Cuban weightlifters doing, so I did steal that directly from them. Okay, I'm gonna add in my little rowing part here. So I'm gonna hold this position, okay? So I wanna hold here at 180, let's say for 20 seconds. After I hold for 20 seconds, I wanna throw in this. Okay, and we can do seven. Switch sides. Oh. Now, that's gonna light up that lower back. It's gonna improve your trunk control. It's gonna improve your overall back stability. And if we remember when we talked about the snatch grip RDLs, some people twist on a catch and you can see that twist. It's very apparent, okay? It's the same issue that we see during the dip and drive, okay? Typically people will twist to the foot that's forward on a split, okay? So if I'm, let's say I'm twisting in the snatch, to my right side, typically my right foot is gonna be forward. Usually, okay, that's usually how it happens. And you can even see this if you watch somebody squat from above their back, you can start to see them twist a little bit. So you can use this exercise to try and alleviate that twisting because now you're improving that trunk control. And I would do the side, so if we use my example of twisting to the right, I would actually use my left side first and then use my right side and do that in conjunction with that snatch grip RDL. Now this movement, what I would do is I would program this during the ascension phase, keep this in the program when I get into the summit phase, but I would take out those rows and instead I would try and just hold a dumbbell here or put plates on my back for an isolated, basically a glute ham plank. That makes it a little bit less stressful. Remember when we're trying to peak during the summit phase, we want a little bit less stress during our accessories. That's gonna help us put more intensity onto the platform. So you can use all these exercises to improve your overall back strength for weightlifting. If you guys need help with the program, head over to garagestrength.com, pick up one of our custom programs. We got silver and gold. If you guys need help with a specific issue, we even have weightlifting programs based off of specific problems that you might have in your overall training. Because remember, freaks, if you guys wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.